This week on Quadriga, German coalition, crisis of confidence. Chancellor Angela Merkel's government is in danger of plunging into crisis as the investigation of a former member of parliament for possible possession of child pornography unfolds. A cabinet minister has resigned and could be prosecuted for passing on information that should have remained secret. The affair raises a tricky question. Is it acceptable for a member of a government to use privileged information to avert harm from a future government? Your host this week, Ali Aslan. Hello and welcome to Quadriga. The immensely popular and successful US TV show House of Cards has just begun its second season. And these days in German politics, we're experiencing our own little version of House of Cards, one that is not very easy to look through. That's why we have invited three experts to explain what the situation is and what ramifications could possibly result out of it. Therefore, welcome to Johannes Leithauser, who is a Berlin correspondent for the German daily newspaper Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. He has been with the FAZ since 1988 and served previously as the paper's London correspondent. Tony Patterson is the Germany correspondent for the British daily newspaper The Independent. He also worked as a foreign correspondent in Paris, Bonn, Warsaw and Vienna. And Christiane Meyer is a correspondent for the German public broadcaster ARD, where she covers various political parties as well as Chancellor Merkel. She was previously based in Washington, D.C., where she served as the ARD's U.S. correspondent. A warm welcome to you all. Christiane Meyer, as I said, for us in Germany, there's very little else that we talk about these days, particularly the political scene. Um, though in the international media, if one follows, it's, it's not really resonating, this so-called scandal that has Germany all up in arms uh, these days. Uh, let's look at the facts. Let's look at the facts as we know them. It all started with the German agriculture, for, um, agriculture minister, Hans-Peter Friedrich, uh, resigning because of something that he did as interior minister. Um, perhaps you can elaborate on that. All right. Um, he revealed a state secret. He did that. Um, he revealed the secret that there was a prosecution or, or at least um, an investigation going on about one member of parliament for child pornography. So he revealed that secret to his future coalition partner, which again he did for he claims political reasons in order to, um, to make sure there won't be a political crisis. But he was not allowed to do that. This is why he resigned. And the discussion now is who knew what, when and why, and who revealed what to whom and why, and who might have warned that member of parliament who then consequently um, sort of uh, disappeared, A, eh? uh, resigned, and also got rid of all his computer hardware. So. This is a, a real crazy situation, and I think there's a lot that has to be revealed from now on. Indeed, a very peculiar situation, Johannes Leithauser. Uh, Hans-Peter Friedrich, then Interior Minister Hans-Peter Friedrich, informed the uh, chief of the Social Democrats, Sigmar Gabriel, about, as Christiane Meyer <coughs> just said, about an investigation of SPD Member of Parliament Sebastian Edati for possible possession of child pornography. Now, this information obviously then was passed on by Sigmar Gabriel to, within his own party to now Foreign Minister uh, Steinmeier, as well as SPD Parliamentary Chief Thomas Oppermann. Now, the question now is, at the end of the day, what laws were broken here? I, I think if and what laws were broken, what did Hans-Peter Friedrich do at the end of the day that caused him to resign, because here's the question that a lot of people are asking, and not only within his own party. Was it not human what he did? At the end of the day, I think there is a difference and distinction that we have to make between what's morally just and what's judicially wrong. Well, <clears throat> um, it might have been justified in political reasons. When you um, uh, marry your, or um, about to marry your wife, and you know something in what's, that's going on in her family um, that has come to your knowledge because of your profession, then you might be inclined to tell her. 
but he was head, he was the Minister of the Interior, he was head of the police um, service and, um, and attorney service in Germany, and because of this office he was forbidden um, to talk about ongoing investigations, and he did. And so he, ha he had to face the consequences and resign. That's crystal clear, and that's a thing of the past as we speak now, because now what's going on presently is the political consequences of what he did. Um, the, his own party is a bit upset that he acted um, for the benefit of another party, uh, which had not to bear the consequences, but he had to bear the consequences and resign. So there are all kinds of, um, of follow-up um, questions and bad feelings now going on between the two coalition parties that are forming the present government. Tony Patterson, you are the correspondent, Germany correspondent yeah. for The Independent. Yeah. How much of this story uh, resonates with your audience, if at all? Uh, very little. In fact, I haven't. I've put the story up, offered it, but um, I haven't actually written a story about this yet. Uh, I may, I may have to. I think we need to go though back to the very beginnings of it. We've got uh, a, a fairly prominent SPD politician, Sebastian Edati, Indian mother. Um, was, got a name for himself by exposing some of these uh, neo-Nazi attacks that have been going on here in Germany and was tipped for a, for a good place in uh, the coalition government of uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel. Then it emerged uh, through Canadian investigations uh, into child pornography that he was on a list of um, recipients of possible child porn and um, it has emerged, at least there have been suggestions, that uh, Mr. Adati received um, pornographic photographs of uh, underage boys posing. This is not an illegal thing in Germany, but it does raise the suspicion of child pornography. And therefore, um, he is under suspicion, and therefore he's, he's disappeared. I think the main question in, in this whole thing is, through the information that was supplied to the then Interior Minister, Mr. Friedrich, whether his conversations to social democrat politicians resulted in the fact that Mr. Edati was tipped off by somebody in the Social Democratic Party, um, which is a, a very difficult and um, contentious issue. If that was the case, then that is a gross breach of parliamentary trust. And I think this is the main issue that's at stake here. And uh, Christiane Maia, the main issue that Tony Patterson touched upon, indeed, if and how and when uh, Sebastian Edati was tipped off mm -hmm. into the fact that uh, there was going to be an investigation, uh, because uh, what we know now is that hard drives were removed from his computer and destroyed before investigators could search his home and uh, his office. Yet, we don't know who tipped him off. Um, Exactly. We don't know. We have no idea. And maybe we will never find out because there were so many people involved who knew about it, like um, all the regional police, the local police, the federal police, um, politicians who had no business with that were involved. So who would eventually, you know, find out who actually tipped him off? And he himself obviously gave an interview to another media outlet where he said he was not tipped off by pol his political um, so, um, um, close peers or whatever, you know, however he framed it, I don't know. And uh, so maybe, you know, the leak was somewhere else. But I think there are a couple of other problems involved. One is the rule of law, you know. There is and has to be a presumption of innocence because what we know is he downloaded photos that are not illegal. So to say that he is under suspicion is one thing, to reveal it to the public is another thing. So um, in all these discussions, the presumption of innocence has been downplayed so much that I'm a little worried about that. That's one thing. The other thing is, um, what do these politicians think? How can the Minister for the Interior believe he himself is above the law? Meaning spill out the beans and give away a secret he actually should treat as a secret to his political opponent or future uh, coalition partner in this case. And um, how could this coalition partner then 
you know, go on and uh, spill the secret to everyone else he knows in his personal uh, sort of uh, political party. Yeah. Isn't, isn't These this, are the questions. Isn't this is the reality of, of politics anywhere? Too bad. That uh, po <laughs> politicians are going to uh, spill, uh, uh, talk about this kind of thing. They're going to uh, mention it. The, the problem here is that it came out. But I think uh, Mr. Friedrich's aim was at the time, at the time we have to look at the fact that the two parties, which are now in coalition government, Chancellor Angela Mer Merkel's Conservatives and the Social Democrats were in, in negotiations which were going on for months. They were under pressure to reach an agreement and form a coalition. And uh, the fear was on the Conservative side that if they let somebody who is under suspicion of dealing with child pornography, uh, that this will result in a scandal for the government. What's happened now is that keeping now the cat's exactly out of the that. sack, and now that's what it's doing, but perhaps not as bad as it might have been back then. Uh, Johannes Leithäuser, uh, Hans-Peter Friedrich still claims he did the right thing. In an interview, uh, he said, uh, look, all I tried to do was to avert harm from a future German government. Is that not legitimate? Um, no, of course not. I, I, not if you are in the position he had been in at the time, not if you are the Minister of the Interior, as we, as we said previously. Um, but the problem is perhaps he didn't feel at that time still so much being in his role because it was after the election, the government dragged on, um, the, one of the coalition, former coalition partners voted out of, of parliament. So we were in, the, in a very prolonged state of being in between and perhaps he felt he might have greater freedoms than, um, um, than he actually did. But um, I think another thing comes into play and this is, um, the, the, the public had, has, been, has wanted this great coalition, the two big parties in Germany forming the government on one hand. On the other hand, we've all been a bit wary because it is in a way undermining um, democratic ways and rules and the way politics normally works and functions. And he has given um, all kind of um, um, justifying reasons for, for these prejudices, you see, by just um, disobeying the law and, and um, forming a political, um, I don't know, um, ways to, 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 um, to interact with his future bodies um, in a way that is not acceptable by, if, if you look at the rule of law. I think we got an unexpected um, view um, inside, yeah. <laughs> you know, which doesn't happen often. So without anybody um, knowing, all of a sudden we can look very closely. Oh, this is how they operate. You know, they talk to each other and they have these arrangements and little understandings. And, and it, and it looks like being a bit of part of a series. Yeah. The first thing exactly. that went public with this um, coalition partners was they wanted to prolong the terms of government. Um, election periods are four years in this country normally. They wanted to extend it to five years, which is a, a kind of a, a, a part-time dictatorship adding a future year to, to your reign. Um, second thing was they were ri are rising their wages. So um, the, the um, uh, pay for, for uh, members of parliament is to be going up. Uh, and that's done very quickly, very fast, very discreetly. And now we have this Minister of the, the Interior um, tipping off his future colleagues in that way. But may I just come back to that one again? Because the Minister of the Interior um, actually resigned, which was really good and I think a, a clean step and move and all right. But then he came back and said, well, I would have done it all over again. And that was maybe not so good anymore because I thought the management of the crisis had been on a good path and, and now it's, it's a little tricky. And um, I, I think that is something to look into, you know, what does politics allow itself to do, you know, because they seem to think that in certain situations they are um, not bound to the law like a normal citizen and that is obviously what upsets the people because they're saying, hey, hang on, you know, if, if you're the Minister of Interior f of the Constitution basically, you know, who if not you has to stick to the rules and then Please, no second guessing about that. And to make matters worse, Tony Patterson, we now also know that SPD Parliamentary Chief Thomas Oppermann called the head of the Federal Office of Criminal Investigation, the yeah. BKA, Bundeskriminalamt, yeah. uh, to confirm whether such investigation into yeah. Edati's yeah. Yeah. alleged uh, possession of child pornography is going on or not. Yeah. Now we have different versions about what actually happened during that conversation. Yeah, apparently, um, <laughs> 
the head of the uh, Federal Criminal Bureau uh, said that he didn't say anything during the whole. So how a conversation took place, I don't know, because nothing was said. And said he didn't ask anything. <laughs> well, that makes it even more interesting. Um, I think that the overall impression that's created is it's, it's this Italian phrase of the one hand washing the other. And this is um, not very nice. Uh, this sends the wrong image for Germany, the most powerful country in Europe, that you've got a government which is comprised of the two main political parties, uh, and they are in cahoots with each other. Um, they're helping each other out. This is the message that's being sent abroad, and this is not very, uh, very tasteful. Not tasteful and certainly no winners up until now, Johannes Leithäuser. The one name that oddly, hardly ever comes up during the so-called scandal is that of Chancellor Merkel. Uh, a lot of people are wondering what did she know, if anything at all, and if she didn't know, what kind of message does it send if the Chancellor, the head of the government, doesn't know about these things going on uh, within her own government? Well, um, she, she, she must be happy she didn't know anything from the beginning, because otherwise she would be in more trouble than, than she is now. But you are right. The, um, but is it possible that she didn't know? Yes, of course, yeah. Um, I think um, the way um, Friedrich, he wanted to present himself when he gave away this information was uh, he wanted to just to please this former, uh, this um, future coalition partner. And maybe he really wanted to, to keep his job, you know. There, there were um, um, contenders for, for this post of Minister of the Interior in the, in the future coalition party SPD and maybe that played a role in the whole thing as well. But um, as in any crisis, um, the, the, the incident is one thing and all the consequences are the main thing then um, in, in the following days and weeks. And so I think the main question for Merkel now is how am I getting my government um, back together and working? Because there is a severe um, um, sense of mistrust now on both sides. But let me ask again, assuming that Chancellor Merkel did not know, what kind of message does it send that the head of the German government doesn't know what's going on with her own government? Well, I mean, if you, if we, if you accuse your Minister of the Interior that he broke the law and you force him to resign, if he would have told you this secret, then um, she would be in trouble for not acting at the time she, she got the news from him. So the only, the only way to protect her is not to have known that uh, a colleague of her government broke the law by giving away this information. So, so she can't, be, can't have been informed if things were all right at the time. And maybe she wasn't. I mean, there's always the possibility that uh, Friedrich totally underestimated the case and thought he can sort of, you know, warn his colleagues and then Edati, the guy who it's all about, would, would kind of be on the sidelines and it would not be a big scandal. I think that was the political intention. It, it wasn't done very well, but it was probably his political intention. And maybe there's a certain credibility that he did not run to the chancellor and say, hey, did you know, you know, this member of parliament? <laughs> but we don't know it. And another major question is, since you brought it up, why did the SPD and Thomas Oppermann in this case reveal uh, the fact that Hans-Peter Friedrich passed on this information in the first place? I think that was the attempt to actually manage the crisis well. Because the last few crises, it was always the case that information came out sort of uh, in, in very small portions. So this time, he probably thought, I put it all on the table. And a, that will protect himself, nice move. B, um, everything will be out on the table and then people can deal with it, which he did in a way. And he claims that he has spoken to the Minister of Interior about his press publication and also to his peers from the Social Democrats. So he didn't, it was not Oppermann by himself. He's now blamed for everything, but it's, uh, I think it's probably not fair because he actually talked to everyone and said, this is what I'm coming out with. Are you all right with this? And Friedrich said, yes, that's fine, even though now he claims he didn't understand Understand it, but anyway, and um, the other two, Steinmeier, the foreign minister, and Gabriel, the uh, the chief of the SPD, they both agreed too. So they're all in the same boat now. They're all certainly in the same <laughs> boat now, and it's a messy boat. 
uh, to say the least. Uh, just one brief word perhaps about Edati himself. As you said, he was a rising star yeah. within the SPD. Many people commended him, even on the other side of the political aisle, commended him for his leadership in which he uh, steered the investigation committee into the so-called NSU neo-Nazi trial uh, in Germany. There are even some conspiracy theorists out there who say this is payback time. This is payback time because he revealed the shortcomings and failures of the German intelligence authorities. Do you give any credence to that? Um, well, I mean, if Canadian investigators uh, turn up uh, through a, a very lengthy investigation, turn up evidence that Mr. Adati had been accessing um, a form of child pornography, I I'm, I'm say this because in Germany this is, this is not illegal, it's adolescents posing in suggestive poses, um, then it strikes me that there must be something in it. I mean, police don't uh, make that kind of mistake that easily in, uh, in this kind of investigation. So I, I think that's very much sort of conspiracy theory type stuff. I think um, he was on the fast track and this is a major stumbling block. Um, and it's not more than a stumbling block, it's the end of his career. But um, what amazes me as an outside observer is the fact that uh, the issue of child pornography with politicians seems to have partially gone under in this in this case. In Great Britain, there's uh, been an on-running sort of scandal about child pornography, which has been going on for two or three years now, involving a, a leading um, a television celebrity who is now dead, and all this information is coming out. And the public is much more sensitised to this issue. In Germany, it seems to the, ish the fact that you have a politician who is suspected, even suspected, of child pornography pornography would be an absolute scandal in Britain. Here it's, it's gone under the political considerations in the... In I the disagree. I disagree. I think it's still a scandal. Yeah. The only thing is, and there is a distinction, so far, so far I say, yeah. it's only about photos that are legal. So the word child pornography implies something and more perhaps harsh. for some outside, outside of Germany yeah. who, who don't really understand what, what the boundaries here are between legal and illegal. So it falls to me, okay. Um, it's about posing, that's the word they use. So if you, and, and the pictures he supposedly loaded down were pictures of uh, naked boys, age, I don't know, 10 to 14. But they didn't pose in a sexual way. At least that is what we hear, but we all don't know that really. And, and now the prosecutor says people who download something like that might download different things or might be involved in child pornography. But that's only an assumption. It's not proven. So, so far we are just talking about legal photos. And that is a point that has to be clear. And that's a scandal in itself. And I mean, the reason why it's in the German press and all over the place is that people are scandalized. I, and that is why I said I, dis I disagree. But at the same time, if it should turn out to be real child pornography, um, I think then the scandal will be even bigger. And I think we will have a, we will have a debate on um, child pornography, on um, stricter, stricter legal um, restrictions on, the, on um, child abuse. But we are still so preoccupied with the, 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 the current uh, political implications that nobody has just had time to sit back and say, okay, we have to change things here. And it indeed, Johannes come. Leithäuser, this is no longer about Edati. This is no longer about alleged possession of child pornography. Uh, um, but this is about a full-blown crisis of confidence. This is about a full-blown political crisis uh, in Germany. The two-months-old Grand Coalition, some people even say, is in jeopardy and new elections could be on the horizons. Uh, would you support that thesis? No, I don't think that um, that, that will happen. Um, although some might wish for it, you know, of course. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I think... Well, as always, uh, if you have this crisis, everybody's trying to exploit it for his own purpose. And so we're still in this um, process where both coalition partners think, hmm, maybe there's something we can get out of it. And they, the Social Democrats are still um, in, in the process of, of just limiting the damage that, that has been done and saving their personnel um, that has been not in office then, so there's no legal problem for them, but political problems. Who has told the, the fact? Um, to whom? At what time? Um, why did, as we mentioned before, Mr. Oppermann, the, um, the, the chief whip of the Social Democrats, um, um, make public the fact that he had been informed by the Minister of Interior and thereby um, just sacrificing him because it must have been clear to him if, if he 
gives this fact to the public, then the minister will have to go. And so, so <clears throat> the Social Democrats are just trying to, to, to polish um, their, their facade at the moment, and the others are thinking, well, what can we get, what can we get out of them as a, as a reward for sacrificing our own minister? And the CDU, and certainly the CSU, is fuming. They want a so-called tit-for-tat. They, they want heads rolling uh, on the other aisle, uh, namely on the side of the Social Democrats. Uh, do you think that will happen? Do you think we will see more people resigning due to the scandal? Um, I, I doubt it. I think um, the main um, sort of victim or, or the main sort of whipping boy has been singled out, and that was um, the uh, former Interior Minister, Mr. Friedrich. O obviously, the CSU, being a Bavarian party, and he being a member of that party, uh, would like to want some revenge. But uh, whether this is going to happen, I, I don't think so. I don't think there's going to be any more resignations unless something very nasty comes out of the woodwork. Uh, some politician in the SPD is identified as the person who tipped off Mr. Adati. In that case, yes, there would be, but um, I, I don't think that that will come out somehow. And Christiane Maya, regardless of whether further politicians will uh, resign or not, a lot of people say in Germany the damage is already being done as far as the erosion of confidence in German politics on the part of its citizens. The fact that, as you pointed out earlier, politicians can do whatever they want to do, disregard the law and bend the law as they please. Uh, do you think this will have further ramifications as far as the political um, you know, lack of pleasement on the part of its citizens? There is again, of course, a kind of a disillusionment uh, with the citizens because they say, oh my God, we thought they do that and now they do all that, you know, they really do it. But at the same time, to uh, be on the positive side, it came out, you know, and it came out and it's being dealt with and uh, people will look at it and I don't think something like that's going to happen again because now we have this discussion, the rule of law, you know, it doesn't, uh, does apply for politicians as well, so they have to live up to it and um, I think that's a very healthy thing in a democracy that you you actually point out what goes wrong and then you try to move on and try to learn from that and in that way I think it might be unpleasant and it might be uh, for some of the politicians very um, embarrassing even but it has to be dealt with and it has to be spoken about and they have to know that the rule of law applies for them like everybody else and if they don't they don't um, obey they have to have bear the consequences yeah. <clears throat> but I think there will there might be um, a lasting damage in the way um, th this this coalition is going to work or has to work because uh, the, the the now often mentioned mr. Opperman he's he's sitting at a key position um, in in this great coalition because he's um, he's the one who has to make the deals with his opposite number in the CDU in the in the larger coalition uh, party, um, being the leader of the faction or chief whip or however you call him. He is to, he has to organise the majorities in in, the, in parliament for the coalition, and so he is the, the one part of this key link where trust is the main um, currency you need to have to 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 get your deals done. And as long as he is under fire, um, the, the, the other, si other side will say, look, um, we, we do have a problem here. So he has to, to offer um, some kind of, of um, well-behaving or some kind of symbol to, to get this trust restored. But if I may say that, there's more at stake than the coalition. It's, they all try to say it's about the coalition, but it's not about the coalition only. It's also about trust in politics. And I think that is the main issue that, you know, looking at politicians, people don't necessarily um, see that the coalition is the state. I mean, the state is more than the coalition, so I, mean, I think... The coalition thinks sometimes. <laughs> the coalition <laughs> thinks they are everything, yeah. because they have this huge majority, yeah. and um, it, they're very difficult to control. And in that sense, it might be even a good thing that things like that come out, because um, with the big majority, you have to be responsible, more than responsible even than you have to be anyway. I think and, that, that's, the, that's the worrying thing, I think, that about Germany as a whole, that you've got a... a, 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 a a coalition government which is so unequal in, in its makeup. You've got a huge uh, majority that was, but albeit not big enough to, for an absolute majority, uh, held by the Conservatives, and a small part of this coalition is held by the Social Democrats. The Social Democrats are, throughout this thing are going to be wanting to make their mark 
to make their name, to come out of it with something, will they be able to? This is the question. That they might jump ship in the middle of it and, and say, we don't want to do it anymore. They might consider an alliance with the... Uh, former communists, we don't know. And some analysts are already predicting that this coalition might not last uh, and hold the four years that it set out uh, to hold. But one apparent problem that I think we all agree on is that there's no shortage and lack of serious topics that need to be tackled in Germany. We're talking about pension reform, we're talking about uh, energy reform, we're talking about the Eurozone crisis, the Euro crisis that obviously hasn't gone away yet. If the coalition is distracted with this scandal, how detrimental is this? Well, um, there are some people who would say we don't need this pension reform, not of the kind they are planning to do it um, at all in any way. But um, I think um, now they have form, they've done this 100 pages coalition agreement. They will stick to it for a while. So I think still both parts of the coalition are interested um, to, to go on with the government and get this through. I think the, uh, the but how do you go on when everybody is so distracted with the scandal, when, every, when all the resources and energies are going into cleaning up this mess? They just will. You will see. You know, they'll just because, the, as you say, the, their interest is all of them want to stay in this government because they gain nothing with new elections. So they all will try to work very hard and it will be verbally it's a big deal. But I think um, after a short while, this is not going to be forgotten or no, they will use it whenever they can. But I think they will just keep going, you know. So I'm, I'm pretty yeah. positive about that. It might change um, the, the attitude though. I mean, um, the former government we, we had started with very high esteem, high esteem with high hopes, and then ruined its reputation within, I don't know, a couple of months. So, um, so there are some fears this just might have happened again now, um, that they just um, gave away all, their, um, all their, their power and all their um, image and steam they had in the beginning, um, and now are just limping on and dragging on for another four years. But I think the, the, the chance is more they will limp on than they will just split. Well, Germany limping on is no good news for the European Union, which is going to hold its election uh, short short time from now in May. Yeah. Um, and a lot of uh, countries on the continent are looking for German leadership here. Yeah. Um, how worrying is this uh, whole political, uh, inner political mess in Germany to Germany's um, role and, and to responsibility as one of the key figures here? Well, I think, to be fair, I think that this particular crisis is a very much a, a seen within Germany and it hasn't really got outside that much. Uh, nobody's sort of saying, help, you know, the, the future of uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel's coalition is in danger or anything like that. For most outside observers, Germany is Angela Merkel and we have a, a coalition government uh, where there is very little sort of visible disagreement from the outside and that represents a degree of stability providing of course that this minor crisis and i say it's a minor crisis can be cleared up quickly if it's allowed to rumble on then it could and people stop more heads start rolling then it could become very difficult but i think it's been contained so far just well, certainly there hasn't been much interest and coverage outside of Germany about this subject matter, but there's certainly an abundance and no lack of coverage here within Germany. And many people are asking and also perhaps criticizing that before we can get to the judicial accusations and court of law, the media and the public court of law has already made up its mind. Uh, and that is not a very, it's not a first in German politics, not even in recent German politics as we know. Let's have a quick look. In Germany, a number of celebrity missteps have played out big in the media's echo chamber. Former German President Christian Wolff stepped down in 2012 accused of accepting favors while in public office. Some say he was the victim of a witch hunt by Germany's yellow press. Two years later, he is expected to be fully rehabilitated by a German court. A different story for Bayern Munich President Uli Hoeneß. Despite having admitted to large-scale tax evasion, he still enjoys the support of his club. His trial is due to start in March. Taxes were also the stumbling block for prominent feminist Alice Schwarzer. She received much unwanted media attention after her admission of tax evasion was leaked. 
Does the boundary between warranted public interest and celebrity voyeurism need to be redefined? Well, Johannes Leithäuser, we just saw the various examples in recent and even current uh, German political uh, landscape. Now, the public court uh, of law, if you will, many people are arguing is much more damaging than anything the actual court of law can inflict. Uh, that's why I want to ask you about the role of the media uh, in Germany. Are we too quick? Are we too quick to judge? Are we too quick to report uh, on these kind of things? Should we show a bit more restraint? I think there's no general yes or no for that. Um, sometimes maybe yes, um, often no, because there clearly is a role for the media here. And especially in, in this um, times we we're just talking about it, when you have a kind of government with such a large majority, there's no uh, too powerful opposition. So the media have a very, very important role. Um, and I wouldn't say in this case we have been talking about that, that they have over, overstepped the mark. Maybe um, uh, with the, the former federal president, Christian Wolff, sometime, um, but that's, uh, that's gone and ago. But I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say this for the, for the actual thing. Christiane Meyer, would you agree? A lot of people said, especially in light of the coverage vis-a-vis uh, -vis Christian Wolff, a lot of people have said we made too much of it, uh, much ado about nothing, we destroyed a reputation, we destroyed a political figure. Now we are slowly finding out there's really not much meat to the story. Do you feel the same here? I would say, generally speaking, they destroy themselves. But um, the media's role is to report. We do that. We do it correctly, I think. Sometimes we overstep. I think Christian Wolff is a good example where uh, it was almost a hunt more than reporting. But I think sometimes the, the sheer quantity of reporting and the total focus is a problem. So if every front page in the country is dealing with Edati or Christian Wolff or whoever or Alice Schwarzer and nobody else is covering the news of the world or the news we also have to deal with like energy um, reform, all these things that are really, really important, then I think it gets a little bit out of hand. It's not so much the content, even though sometimes some people overstep, it's always like everywhere, you know, people are, you have to specify that, but, or, or you you have to look at the specific case. Some commentators do, but others don't. But I think the, the mere quantity and the focus on these things is maybe a little exaggerated. And Tony Patterson, one country that hardly ever shows uh, restraint <laughs> when it comes to political <laughs> scandals <laughs> is Great Britain. We'll yeah. throw the ball out to you. Yeah. Uh, you've already alluded yeah, and yeah. suggested that this story would have been covered very differently in Great Britain. Yes, I think because of the concerns that have been raised about child pornography in general in, in Britain, that it's a, it has become a live issue uh, and it, uh, every politician is concerned with it. Um, I think that um, in general, given the fact that in the Wolf case, it, I think there is some justification to say that was a bit of a witch hunt. But at the same time, this person was the president of the country, so perhaps that was justified. Um, mm. But I think uh, Sean is right in, in, in the sense that one, the media does tend to take issues single issues and blow them up very much. They become one issue stories uh, and the country becomes fixated with it and there are other things going on at the same time. So there is a tendency to do that. But the time span, I think, that these um, stories occupy the media is, is shorter than, than it might have been before. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Um, the topics come, the topics go. And um, before you know, before you actually get all the information you really need, like in this case, yes. we already switched to another scandal. That happens. <laughs> but that's a natural with media, I'm afraid yes. to say. What, what lessons, Johannes Leithäuser, after the smoke and the mirror is all <laughs> gone and after we know, allegedly perhaps know all the facts and heads have been... Uh, has have rolled. What lessons are to be learned here for German politicians? Um, well, for, for, for the ones that are in it at the moment, I think they have to, to think over their crisis management severely. I mean, there, um, there has, been, has been no talks and no, no plan formed how to handle this before they went public. And that's why it blew blew up in their faces so much uh, to the extent it did. So I think they will have, they start, there has already been um, a, a meeting of, of, of the three heads of the three coalition parties, meaning um, Christian Democrats and their Bavarian partner and the Social Democrats. So they're trying to find ways um, to form new trusts, but I think they have to, 
they have to agree on some mechanisms how to deal with cases like this in the future. Christiana Maya, what is the lesson here? Just tell the truth from the get-go? Not necessarily. I think um, they have to be less casual about the division of power, for example, and take the Constitution a little bit more seriously. And for us, the press, it means we really have to watch them. We have to watch them very closely because when they're in their little bubble of politics, they seem to forget about the essentials sometimes, not necessarily because they're evil or anything. It it's just comes with the turf, maybe. And that is something they have to be aware of, and they have to learn from that. Though other countries, such as the Ukraine, would envy us for our problems, nevertheless, uh, people's uh, trust in institutions uh, and politicians and the rule of law in Germany have been somewhat hampered and, and uh, damaged by this crisis. Would you agree? Definitely. And I think um, I'd agree very much with what Christian was saying, that um, uh, the press, the role of the press is very important in Germany now. And I think they've been doing actually a pretty good job on this. They picked up pretty fast on what was going on. And because of the construction of this coalition, we've got the, the country's two major parties in, a, in government. There's no real opposition here in Germany. I mean, what have we got? The Greens and, and the, um, the Linke, the left party, minor parties by comparison. That is all, that makes it that much more important that the press is up to the mark and following exactly what they do. And uh, that the government is on, is on its toes to get rid of the effect or the, uh, get rid of dis, uh, giving the impression that they're in bed with each other, um, which is, sends the wrong message. And one consistent fact here, Johannes Leithauser, is that Chancellor Merkel has once again proven that she is a Teflon Chancellor. Even this scandal does not touch her. <laughs> yes, of course. She has not been excited at all by this, um, but just uh, done her things, dismissed her minister in, her, in a very calm way. So that is the thing you can rely on if you want. <laughs> Do you think this coalition will last for four years? Yes. Briefly? Well, <laughs> couldn't be more briefer. The answer couldn't have been more briefer. We will see whether this coalition will last for the next four years. For now, I want to thank my guests for shedding some light also to our viewers worldwide about what this political scandal has and is all about. I want to thank you out there for tuning in and we will of course continue to follow the story as it unfolds to happen. Looking forward to seeing you again next week for a new edition of Quadriga.